Today, I'm going to review Ryan Fisher's Full Body Aesthetics program. Now, this is a program he claims to be his most popular program and having about 10,000 people utilizing this program, which is a lot of people. So when we think about programming, I want to provide you guys a framework so you understand what it is I'm looking at. Even if you don't have any background in programming, I want you to understand the things I'm looking at so you can watch this video and make your own judgment on it. I'm going to lay all this out for you. I'm going to tell you what I see. I'm going to tell you my thoughts and opinions, and I'm going to be completely unbiased and tell you exactly what I'm thinking seeing this. In this video today, I have looked at this program prior to doing the video, and then I recorded what I thought of the video thereafter. So there wasn't a whole lot of time where I was thinking about it. And, and to be honest, I really don't need a whole lot of time um, thereafter. I don't need to study the program and then go back. But understanding um, a couple key things ahead of time was helpful to me. How things are laid out throughout the course of the week. How many days are there? Obviously the goal, it's a full body training program. Those are things that I went into this with knowing. Okay, so for you guys, the things I am looking at is exercise selection. Exercise selection can be very specific to the individual. In this case, you're delivering a program to the masses. So we need to think about more greater good for greatest number. I'm going to go into why I feel this exercise selection in this video is terrible. It's probably putting it nicely. Okay, so if you want to see bad exercise selection, stick around for the rest of this video. Number two, exercise order. Where are those exercises sequenced within a training session? Do they make sense? Does one play off the other? Is there a disconnect? Number three, sets, reps, and rest intervals. Again, this is all basic stuff you can find in any textbook, any exercise science textbook that has a programming section, uh, like essentials of strength training and conditioning. You can find all this information in there. So exercise order, exercise selection, sets, reps, and rest intervals, basic stuff. Now, some other things to consider here is how this training is structured in the course of a week. What are we doing on certain days? Is there conditioning? If there is conditioning, how is it structured? Is it utilizing a specific modality with a specific intent? And is that clear to the end user? Other things, small things that I look in, look at and take into consideration are warm-ups and cool-downs. Are there any? You're going to find out in this video. A few other things to keep in mind is that... Full body training, to me, says a few things. It says that we're training the squat, the hinge, the lunge, the push, the pull, even a loaded carry pattern. Not mandatory loaded carry, but there should be some core work in there, some rotational work. So you have anywhere from five to seven foundational, key foundational patterns that need to be trained. Now, the question is, how often do you train them? Do you train them every day? In this case, do you train them five days per week is what Ryan has you doing? Do you train them three days per week? How does that work? I'm going to give you my honest feedback on that. Overall, there's a lot to say about this program. This is to start off reviewing a program. I was pretty much caught off guard with this program. And you're going to find out whether or not that's good or bad. So stay tuned. Check this out. Drop your comments. Drop your feedback. This is going to be something that we do pretty regularly on this channel. I'm going to look at programs that I'm going to give the stamp of approval. I'm going to look at programs that I do not give the stamp of approval. I think that there is a lot of people out there in this hard moment utilizing an online program. They don't even know what they're looking at. They're using it and they think it's a great program. I've heard people say that this is such a great program that they're using. And then to look at the program and find out it is absolute garbage. That happens all too often. I take what I do incredibly serious. The business of writing programs for people is serious. If we just throw the kitchen sink at people, we have no plan, we have no structure, and we don't follow fundamentals, we can put people in a position to get seriously injured. It can be negligent. Some of these programs I see are negligent. Is this one? You're going to have to stay tuned and watch more. All right, so we're taking a look at Ryan Fisher's Full Body Aesthetics program, and this is a, as it implies in the name, full body program. There are five full body training days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is a rest day, Friday, and then Saturday, and then Sunday is a rest day. As I talked about in my intro video, we're going to look at exercise selection, exercise order, set reps and rest intervals, and just kind of give this a basic score in terms of whether or not this is a program that is either an approved program or a disapproved program. So first and foremost, do we check the boxes with full body? This first day has a squat pattern, a press pattern, a hinge, an upper pull, it has some accessory work for the abs and arms, so that is a check. As far as rest and rolls are concerned, there are some things that are kind of weird to me. We're building to a heavy single in the back squat in three to five total sets, which in my mind is not enough sets. You're likely going to need about seven to nine sets to build to a one. Uh, two to four minutes rest is on point. There's no issue with that. And then you're dropping down to 70% and you're performing as many reps as possible in five minutes. Don't understand the logic of that unless you are a CrossFit athlete and you need to really work on, you know, more strength endurance. This is for asking the general public to do something like this. In my mind, the return is not worth it. The risk is not worth the return that we get. This is something I would not recommend that people do. Now, we are pressing pressing with a barbell overhead and then doing some dumbbell press in a full body day do we need to do two press patterns probably not two to three minutes is perfectly fine one to two minutes all the rest and rolls there's no issues with the rest and rolls here the day itself in terms of this day if i was just looking at this day other than this back squat it's kind of it's kind of mismatch for most people the order of this i would put this 
Nordic hamstring curl work, which is a very demanding hamstring exercise, very advanced. A lot of people likely won't be able to do this. I mean, this is a good one to do on a glute ham raise. He's got a seated leg curl machine, which is not a good substitute for this. In the notes here, I would likely have this after my back squat, and then I would go into some upper body work uh, for the day. The order would be better. The back squat will potentially have you warm and ready to go to perform an accessory exercise like a Nordic hamstring curl. I would likely do some type of glute ham raise or Romanian deadlift here though. Chin ups, he's got a two rep max followed by some max reps, which again, for most people, 2RM and then max reps chin up unless you're a super advanced athlete probably not going to be able to do that so I would I would likely go with just weighted chin ups or a body weight chin up or an assisted chin up of course and then again no issue with everything else that's here now more open cool down there really isn't any this is something I would dial in I would have more direction in terms of what we're doing preparing specifically for the day today because again you know you've got some heavy movers here low impact cardio foam rolling again kind of just fluff and then no cool down I actually this part here completing one to three sets of every movement with lighter work weight I think is probably the best part of the warm-up of this stuff just fluff i'd get rid of it all together okay so that's day one now day two we go into day two we are pressing again now doing a four rm we're doing some rows so let's again let's just go through this let's check the boxes we've got press hinge row lateral raise tricep work shrug okay so this technically isn't a full body day we need some type of single leg pattern here for this to be a full body or a squat pattern okay so we don't have that here as far as rest and rolls go i didn't see really any issue with the rest and rolls you know there are some strategies that we could use here too to make this day a little bit more enjoyable in terms of what it is. We could use some supersets. We could improve the training density versus just doing eight exercises and then back to back. You were looking at about two hour training sessions here. Dumbbell RDLs, you know, again, no issue with that. The rep scheme, four sets of 12. I mean, you can vary that. Hamstrings respond very well to lower repetitions. Lateral raise is something that's in the program quite frequently. I don't know if I would program lateral raises that much in a course of a week. He's got them three times in here. But overall, no warm up, no cool down. This is something, again, we could slow hanging fruit for a lot of people. It's an easy way to get people prepared. And I, I, I think this part is probably the best part of it is, is, you know, I would probably say three sets because this warm up is just very much lacking. So overall, you're pressing on Monday and then pressing heavy on Tuesday. And then to keep in mind what we did on Monday, we did some heavy pull-ups. We're doing pull-ups again, weighted pull-ups. We did chin-ups on Monday. We're doing pull-ups on Wednesday. Asking a lot of people, more row work. He does have a single leg pattern in here. So again, we, if we look at this in terms of structure, full body, we've got upper pull. We've got a hinge. Is there a hinge? There is no hinge, but there is a single leg pattern. So maybe that's why he did a hinge the day before and then not a single leg. Full body sessions, you know, three days in a row. It's asking a lot of people. Again, kind of the same feedback I have. No warm-up, no cool down. Rest and rolls are fine. Exercise selection overall is just a large majority of people, you know, asking them to do max rep pull-ups, weighted pull-up followed by max reps. Again, you know, it's kind of just a mismatch for a lot of people. If you were doing in training an individual and you had someone super strong that was very, you know, advanced, there are certainly some things that you could do, some strategies that you could use for that to challenge them. But this is something that's delivered to the masses, all right? So we've had three very intense days, pretty long sessions. And then Thursday is a rest day, which is an easy day that you could have used some, some conditioning. There is no conditioning in this program, which to me is a, another area of low-hanging fruit that we're not tapping into. And I get it, it's a full body program, but full body, you know, in my mind is done most effectively when you train three days per week, and then you put in some conditioning work on uh, the days to bridge the gap. So there's none of that in here. Rest day is just like, okay, what's a rest day? We're we doing anything. Are we walking? Are we doing any type of low impact or low intensity conditioning? I don't know. It's nothing there. So Friday, we're going into another very intensive day, deficit deadlift, which is a mismatch for a lot of people. A lot of people are not going to be able to do this, maintain a neutral spine. Not to say that I'm, you know, completely against maintaining a neutral spine. I think that the fl the spine should go through range of motion. Thinking about the masses here, so we've got we've got a hinge, we've got a press, we've got a hinge again, we've got some pullover, so some more accessory work, lateral raises, cross body extensions, cable crunch. Again, the rep schemes are for the most part fine. I probably would would make some adjustments to those, clean some of that stuff up. Rep schemes, rest and rolls are okay. Exercise order, you know, again, I would probably put this Nordic leg curl first. I don't know why we're doing it twice in the same week. It's a great pattern, but you no, know, there are a lot of great patterns that I wouldn't necessarily program twice in the same week, I'd probably program a hip hinge variation like a hip thrust or different type of RDL or or maybe a glute ham raise if they have access to it. And then I would have the dips come later on. I would likely superset that with the pullovers to really a lot of structural stuff that we could easily clean up here. So this is the fourth day of full body. Now we're going to look at Saturday, which again, I'm already tired looking at this. We are doing more lateral raise, different angle, which is good move, more pressing, more rowing. Now, if you want to smash yourself, this is definitely a good way to do it. This program will definitely smash you. Again, for most people, a lot 
lot of the stuff's going to be a mismatch. We can have a lot higher, a lot better effect on most people. If we had less overall sessions, as far as full body is concerned, we can have this done structurally very efficiently and effectively in three full body sessions done spread out over the course of a week. So say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then have some conditioning that, that goes in between those days. So overall, this is not a program I would recommend. There are a lot of great programs out there for full body. This is not one that I would recommend that most people do. If you are incredibly advanced and you want to challenge for a bit, then maybe, but long-term trying to train this many sessions, this much resistance training with no conditioning, in my mind, something that will, will put you in a position to have some type of rover inch overuse injury. Full body, the benefits of it are being able to train less frequently because you are training full body and spread that volume out over the course of the week. He's doing full body, but he's doing it with the same volume as a body part split. So take that for what it is. I personally wouldn't do this program myself, but if you are someone that likes two hour, very brutal sessions where you like a lot of soreness, soreness is one of those things that people judge the effectiveness of a program by soreness. Soreness is one of those things that can take away from, you know, hypertrophy and, and actually getting stronger. So there is optimal amount of everything, in my opinion, and this program is overkill for a lot of people.